Black History Month is important uh, not only because in its earliest days it was an acknowledgement of the contributions of black people to American democracy, but even over the last 40 years when it went from a week to a month, it has become increasingly important to explaining how the nation became a nation that is multiracial. None of what we call civil rights today makes sense without understanding black history. Civil rights means that you are fighting for or acknowledging the basic guarantees that every individual protected by the Constitution is entitled to. Since uh, President Trump was elected in 2016, the broadest definitions of civil rights have been challenged. We've seen instances of swastikas being sprayed on the sides of buildings in liberal cities around America or nooses hanging on co-workers' desks. While it's hard to draw a direct line from the president to all of this behavior, we certainly can draw a dotted line. And in that sense, he has not used the power of his office or the power of the pulpit uh, to define an America that is free of racial hatred, but in fact has excused much racial hatred as a kind of, they get to behave this way too. One of the things I think is important about both looking at this as a moment that says we still have work to do, even for people who are self-defined liberals and Democrats, is to be more honest about their own coming of age in a racist country. Be honest about the fact that when a blackface image of you shows up on your yearbook page, whether it's you or not, which is unbelievable, but putting that aside, that your fellow students thought it was funny and interesting, the editors of the book thought it was okay to publish, and the school thought it was okay to publish. And until we can have that conversation about the consumption of racism, then we're not going to see the fast or hard break from the past that keeps popping up. Sometimes people express frustration that no matter how much information you share with someone and how compelling your set of arguments are and what you point them to to read, they still don't change. They still don't believe white privilege is real. And I would say that while you still have to press forward, you have to make the case you may not win those arguments, the real opportunity for us starts with our kindergartners. We can't make the assumption that five-year-olds are colorblind. Uh, because children see difference in the world. And if we leave them on their own to fill in the blanks, they're going to learn from society. They're going to pick up all the cultural cues that exist in our world. So we have to be intentional. But we also could be more deliberate about what we teach them in class. If you ask children of elementary age who are the most famous Americans who are not presidents, the two most commonly cited people are Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Miss Rosa Parks. What's interesting is that I would say if you could pick two people to completely rewrite the story of, they are the perfect candidates because their familiarity already over-indexes for the kind of um, superficial history that we're teaching our children the kind of Black History Month bulletin board of which they become prominent figures. Both of them are literally like 180 degrees more complicated and quite different than we like to remember them. The hope for me is that if we can take on that work together, if we can be serious about changing what we teach our kids, then we can expect different adults. And if we get different adults, then they'll understand and be more vigilant about not repeating the mistakes of the past.